TPC followers, uh, TPC right now is in Czech Republic in extreme Europe and that's one of the biggest, probably the biggest uh, uh, practical shooting competition, Ipsic style. here with uh, with the greatest shooter of all time nine time in a row world champion Eric Grafell. Hi guys nice to meet you. Uh, Eric uh, there's no doubt you're dominating the world of practical shooting for the last 10 years even more because you're also a junior champion. True. Uh, let's put the technicality aside one of uh, uh, in my opinion one of your strongest uh, part of your competitive game is your mental game. To stay solid and to perform at your best for so long time worldwide, how you achieve that? Your <laughs> mental game. I know it's a, it's a tricky question, but... Uh, it's a hard question to answer. Um, how to say? I mastered the game based on math first, so which helped me to follow some rules. Uh, of how to shoot stages, how to perform stages, how to analyze stages. And I just, I just follow the rules, so... Should I say that the mental game is, is above some other guys? I'm not that sure. However, I made those rules in order to keep me in the line of what needs to be done and making sure that I do respect those rules in order to, to bring the best or actually not necessarily the best of myself but whatever is necessary uh, to bring a match win back home. Okay, so a lot of, a, a tons of ammunition for sure. Yep, so a yep. great experience with that. Experience will bring confidence for sure. Yep. But uh, do you feel sometimes a little bit of a pressure? You mentioned several times that actually you like to shoot under pressure. Sometimes sure, when sure. Uh, everything is on a table, uh, and we know and we preach that at some point, depends on the pressure, pressure can uh, manifest itself to a physical tension. Yep. What's the trick to avoid that? Is because tension, it's a worse enemy of uh, accuracy and precision sometimes, right? Definitely. If it's too much. Definitely. Well, it's hard to tell, you know, everyone reacts differently. Everyone reacts to some trigger points. So as you said, you can have pressure, tension, but it can be also uh, the other side of the uh, of, um, of the sport. For some people, it's sponsorship. For some people, it's uh, recognition in their country. Uh, so everything can be triggered one way or the other. Um, the only thing is to probably not put aside what, what could be those trigger points but necessarily just focus on the instant and the instant is the stage and the stage do not matter whatever you are doing it uh, for the job or for your sponsors or for this or for that you are here to do a task and you have to complete that task complete it in a certain way that you bring that performance so i would say the, the main focus in the mentality setup is to be able to cut everything off at that moment just to bring your shooting whatever you can do and you can deliver at that moment uh, and and that comes down to also family issues could down you know you're away from your country you're in a different country uh, you have time zone difference and so on so on so all of these are factors and, and always on the other side you have the people that are saying yeah well, I came here, but I'm still jet lag. I didn't shoot good because I'm still jet lag, or I didn't shoot good because of this or because of that. And I keep saying to to the people I train and and uh, and friends too. I say, guys, or even the national team in France, I say, 
whatever you're saying, they are just excuses. Excuses, yes. And at the end, your competition, no matter what, and who is your competition, they absolutely don't care about your excuses. For sure. You came here, you decided to come over here to shoot the match. You can bring any excuses you want. It has absolutely no validity here at that moment. So you have to forget everything. Yes, you might have some issues, some problems, some, yeah, some stress that came out from a trigger point, but you need to complete the task. Kick it away, focus on the process, on yep. now and the process, and just execute it, right? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> For a lot of people, it's uh, easier to be said to be done. Yep. It's, it's an art, right? It's, yep. it's, it's connected with philosophy as yep. well. Yep. Uh, what we like, we like to talk about shooting, regardless, is, is it competition shooting? or it's law enforcement, self-defense, or military shooting, it, it's still, it's a martial art. It's, yep. it's not just a game, right? Yep. It yep. brings the philosophy, it brings the mental state. Uh, Ron used to say that uh, shooting is, after you polish your core skills, it's 90% mental. Yep. The ability to perform yep. everything calmly and precisely under stress, it's a big factor. And, and that is either in a work for the military and police or either the sport shooters. We just do different style of shooting, mm -hmm. but mastering the performance is still a mental process to execute what has to be done at that moment, your task, mm -hmm. Not, mm -hmm. nothing else, what you, have, you are supposed to do. Just right now at the moment. And exactly. not to stay focused so much on the result, stay on the task. So if you perform that task really well, the result will be a consequence Normally, of that task. Exactly, right? exactly. Most of the time. But you mentioned that you, you uh, at your level, you're always uh, observing how the, the competition is going and your main competitors, yep. you, you follow them and you can adjust your shooting based on that, right? It's yep. a smart way to do because it's not, not necessary to risk too much if you know that you have a comfortable lead. But that's the same thing. It's also a trigger point for some people because a lot of guys will tell you, I don't like to know. Because mm -hmm. for them, it's more pressure. Mm -hmm. More pressure that they have a short lead or they are just right behind and they don't know what they have to do. Should they push? Should they, should they just stand by, wait, be patient? And, and that's why I put my rules into play that you do this, when you are in this situation, that's the solution. That should be the potential outcome mm -hmm. at that plus minus percentage. Mm -hmm. There's always, always question of percentage included, yes, uh, because the outcome is based on statistics. However, most likely, since we are human operators, we already know that the statistics is fairly true all the way through. Oh, for sure, for sure. And uh, actually what you do, probably you dedicate a lot of time to, to play over that scenarios and just to stay, uh, how to say it, um, not only mentally focused, but also very disciplined about applying your rules yeah. in the game, right? And even if I have, to, you know, you have to lose at some point, mm -hmm. but if the rule says, no, you give it away, you have to give it away. You don't even try, because if you try, you're taking more risk. And we know that the, animal, the outcome taking more risk is most likely either 50-50 or even worse, uh -huh. you're on the 30% good side and 70% on the wrong side. Most likely in the match, when you're asking for yourself to go for it and putting 100% of your abilities, it never works mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because you're already on the edge. Oh yeah, and sometimes, uh, we like to, to teach in the class that it's it's like a cliff. Yep. You need to be brave enough to walk on the edge, not too much far backwards in your safe area because you're, giving, you're not using the true potential. But at the other side, not to step over the edge because you're crash and burn, right? Yeah, it's no, the art. I would even say even being at the edge because you don't know if that edge actually will break under your weight. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. that's why you, you personally, I never shoot 100%. Mm -hmm. Worst case scenario, I shoot 98%. Mm -hmm. And that's worst mm -hmm. case scenario. Most of the time I'm around the 94, 95, 93% Comfortable. in that area, but I stay steady here. Uh, because also on top of that in IPSC or USPSA, we, since we shoot several stages, several techniques are involved in the competition. And of course, different style of stages. Uh, I would say a good IPSC shooter is, is not the one that shoots the fastest or not the one that shoots um, the, the, the most accurate, 
uh, but you need to be good at everything. You can't be the best at everything. That's fairly impossible. That would mean winning it's very every, complex. every winning every single stages in the competition. Yeah, that would be a world record. But I don't see that happening to anyone. Uh, but if you can stay stable within, I would say, on the world shoot scale between first place to top ten, you pretty much at the end on the podium. That's almost mm -hmm. sure because you're there, so you're stable. You're, 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 yes, you win a couple of stages, you're tenth place on a couple of stages, but you're there. So that means you know how to shoot fairly everything. You had, you're probably the best on one or two of your personal technique yeah. that you developed, and you know you like those style of shooting and so on, so on. So those you work on, but yeah, being able to shoot everything, and that means in the training, not to only shoot like a lot of people what you like but definitely shoot everything. Of course, you have to shoot what you like to keep it at the level that it is, but also whatever you don't like, you need to maintain it uh, at some sort of a level. Even if you can gain a couple of percent over years, it's even yeah. better, of course. And that's, that's a challenge. You see a lot of great shooters, you know, they perform, perform really on the edge, but they have a, a stage that they really crash, they drop, they make a big mistake. Yep. Is there a, a secret that you, you apply to kind of avoid that or not to put yourself in such a, a, a pressure situation? One, or just experience? One, yeah, experience most of the time. Again, it's the rules, the rules I made in, in place. Uh, I got the answer of how I want to shoot the stage before. Uh, based on the heat factor probably? Based on the heat factor okay. most of the time. Um, and, and then based also on what the competition is doing uh, while, while they the run placements? the stage. So mm -hmm. I can see, I can target uh, if they shoot in front of me. Uh, I can actually target their mistakes and see if, I, if there's some interest for me to do some points or even why not nailing it down in the sense that, okay, let's put even more pressure on because that's my type of stages. They made a mistake. I put the pressure on if it works. Uh, that's that's a, that's a strong win, especially on the mental game side. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but sometimes it's just a, okay, I don't like that stage. They made a mistake. I don't like that stage. So let's say they shoot a miss. Potentially it's a 15 points. So let's not go for the 15 points, but let's go for 10. Mm -hmm. So I'm giving away five, but I'm taking 10, mm -hmm, securing mm -hmm, 10. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. not fantastic, but it's still this. It, it's kind of you, you're comfortably uh, going through the stage in order to wait for a better stages where you can push and yep. put more pressure for them. Yeah, pretty much. And once again, within the squad, if there is a reason to change last minute, the let's say the, the my walk through my stage uh, tactic, I will mm -hmm. without mm -hmm. any question. Mm -hmm. Uh, feel comfortable with that, right? Because th that will mess a lot of uh, a lot of shooters. That will mess their mental game most of the time. But again, based on experience, yeah. so many years, strong mental game, ability to to stay focused on the process. Yep. Probably that's a helpful thing. Uh, can you share with us one of your rules, as you said, that you you kind of find it most valuable? Of course, without spilling the, the, all the extras, the, the golden nugget, but well, something that will be a good guide for uh, some of the shooters. It's fairly straight, simple. One of the, uh, when I teach competition classes, especially for those who are going in, in matches and or national teams, and I'm saying, okay, guys, what, what's your, which stages you think you can make the most points out of it? Mm -hmm. Everyone pretty much answers, Oh, those are the 32 rounders, field mm -hmm. courses. Mm -hmm. Long stages. I said, so I'm like, why is that? Because it's 160 points. Okay. Okay, I understand. But what if that 32 round stage, okay, you can do it three seconds faster. Oh, I make a lot of points. Yes, but the hit factor is only three. Mm -hmm. So you make mm -hmm. nine points. Okay. And then you do a speed shoot, 12 round stage where the heat factor is above 10 or at 10 mm -hmm. High and, you make, and you make one second faster, you also make 10 points, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. if I was making a three second on a 10 hit factor, that would be 30 points. So basically, personally, where, where I'm playing, it's most likely the highest hit factor stages. Those are the high valuable stages where if you can strike and be uh, having the right strategy or aggressive enough strategy mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. works, that the, you know that you can deliver and perform it right there and find the right sequence, this is where you make the most money out of it.
you gain more and you, you don't put have, more pressure. You don't have to think if it's a small course or mm -hmm. a long course, it doesn't matter at all. What matters is the hit factor of the stage. And mm -hmm. the one second on the 10 hit factor, it's 10 points that you can pocket in. Yes, yes. And you put some pressure for the other guys also to try to, to perform exactly. at that point. That, Speed can lead exactly. to some mistakes. And sometimes, <laughs> you know, on the long course, I, I will probably leave one or two seconds slower mm -hmm. than the competition, but hit closer to the full ace, just because it doesn't matter. And still it will be the same it kind still of will amount be the same of points, because I'm, yeah. I'm not. I'm not taking any risk. I'm not losing points. Yeah, they made two seconds faster, but the, the hit factor was, I don't know, four or five, but they shoot five Charlies in minor. You got, you got your 10 points off. I got my full house. Same. And feel comfortable without and a pressure? Did I take any risk? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. They did. They yes. passed. Good for yeah. them. But yeah. they might not the next one. And if, you, if they take a risk every single stage, at some point, something will it, crack, right? It will. It <laughs> will. It's just mathematics. Yes, but it's also good because you, you're playing, you know, in a mental in a mental side with some of the competitors, especially if they're shooting in the same squad, mm -hmm. like most of your competitors will have in the top squad. That's a that's a clever way to approach it. Really well, nice. It's, it's hard for them. Uh, it's hard for them. It's hard for me too. Eh? Because, for sure. You, you know, you can lose, you can win. The the only difficulty in my strategy in the way I do it is I will know from the, I mean, very soon from the beginning, if I'm winning or if I'm losing. So you know already during the match where you're standing into your, into your competition mm -hmm. in real time, basically. So it's, it's a risky game. It is, uh, it is. To, to, in to play with. Many but, levels. <laughs> but it's the true. In any case, at the end of the day, at the end of the match on the last shot fire, the true will come out. For so, sure. Or you're prepared and you get the true during and you know what's happening and that's it. Or you take a slap in your face at the end of the day and uh, or you're on the good side, you get the first place because that's what matters. The rest doesn't matter, unfortunately. Uh, or, yeah, you wait till the end. And at the end, you're competing with yourself. How disciplined you are in your mental game and everything, execution. And if you know your abilities and yep. you know how to push according to your abilities, yep. you'll do your best, right? Um, tell me right now, we, you have, it's a fact that there's uh, Eric Graffel CZ Shooting Academy in France, mm -hmm. right? Completely yep, indoor. Yep, yep. Uh, it's a fact, one of the, I believe, that what I'm looking right now, you know, in the videos and all that stuff, one of, amazing facility, indoor, totally independent from the weather conditions, yep. day and night, uh, uh, a big base over there, 180, right? Yep. yep. Uh, tell me a little bit more about, um, you know, how the people can reach you about the classes, uh, the website or how they can find more materials uh, to schedule uh, classes with you uh -huh. or just to get in touch with you. So they can go on the website egccacademy.com. Uh, there they have a contact email and they can shoot the email. It will get to me uh, no matter what. Um, Classes, we run classes usually Monday to Fridays. Okay. Uh, we got five bays. Uh, two of them are dedicated to uh, regular shooters uh, during the week times uh, and also the weekend, of course. But we got so regular precision shooting and some fun shooting with steel targets, reactive, you know, uh, plate racks and stuff. And then three bays dedicated to practical shooting. Um, so those bays are fully adaptive. We can, we can shoot, as you said, uh, day and night, of course, and we have moving targets, we got uh, shooting on the move, everything. So we got pretty much two bays already set all the time for really hard working. One bay uh, fully open to do just, you know, very basic stuff, uh, but including movements and, and, uh, and of course, basic techniques. Uh, and yes, they can, they can reach me out uh, fairly easy by email, usually I answer pretty quick. Uh, but just to give an idea, don't call me Friday for a course next Monday. That's not yes. gonna, that's not gonna work today. Um, since we got the academy, we got more and more people coming uh, mm -hmm. because it's true. Since it's indoor, it's very simple to to schedule. We don't have to worry about the weather conditions. Mm -hmm. We just get there. We can shoot. Totally independent. Totally. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, and even a lot of now people from outside European Union are coming because we get we got firearms. We got a lots of CZs, 
Uh, we got also a few of other brands and we're gonna get more and more guns. Also so they the can future. rent, they can rent ammunition, exactly. they can rent a exactly. firearm, everything. They, exactly. they don't need to worry about flying with the firearms they can, and all that Of stuff. course they can bring with their stuff, sure. but if they don't want to bother, we have quite a lot of stuff already now, uh, so we can support that. Also in the future, we'll have some matches there. Oh, beautiful. So that means, uh, and there's already an interest in that concept so that the people can come and shoot the match over the weekend. And then we run classes after on the stages of the match, okay. which can also be good in terms for those who want to prepare for competition and mental game and, uh, you know, the, doing the mass and the rules. So that. basically break through the match and see what kind of elements you can adapt and you can perform better. That's extremely useful for for competitive shooters. Exactly, absolutely. exactly. Absolutely. Excellent, uh, guys, we will attach all the links. Uh, if you want to reach Eric and schedule a class with him, uh, just check the description below the video. And uh, uh, great, so uh, is there a possibility somebody to schedule a private, some, something that it's custom-based yep. training Com for, it's you know, but it's at the at the end of the day, it's always custom mm -hmm. uh, because uh, we can run through a program when it's complete beginners and that's easy. I got a, a bunch of instructors with me, working with me, so they usually start with the new guys, and uh, and I get some uh, some people who are already a little bit more advanced uh, to the shooting. But I do also complete beginners uh, from time to time, and yeah, I can take groups from privately one person. Uh, or two or three, sometimes two or three person groups are excellent because you have time to shoot, rest, and see the others also. So it's it's pretty fast rotation, but still it's very comfortable. A one person, a one-on-one -on -one person when we do training, it's tough. It's, it's exhausting on it's the student, It's exhausting right? because I'm the type of guy who is behind your neck all the time, and I'm not leaving you any room. And that's good, that's how you learn. That's how, you, that's how you learn. Pressure but, creates diamonds, right? But, but, <laughs> but, but it's hard for the people. So yeah, that, that would be one way. We got, so my, my, my team of instructors that does uh, handguns. I got Sebastian who does uh, PCC mm -hmm. also at the, at the range. So we are five instructors right now within the compound. We, it's very simple to find solution and adapt groups uh, at the academy. Excellent, great. Uh, and uh, at the very end, uh, a few words that you want to address the new shooters that wants to try the competitive, the world of competitive shooting. You know, there is a mantra, oh, competitive shooter will get me killed in the street. Uh, but the end, marksmanship is marksmanship. The ability to control the firearm under speed and accuracy, it will be very beneficial for any kind of a military law enforcement or self-defense purposes if you're able to differentiate the tactical application of it, but at the end, shooting is shooting. shooting the technical is shooting. side is yep. shoot, uh, technical yep. side, yep. right? That's true. So any messages for the people that are still hesitant to try competitive shooting? Well, in any case, the, fir the very first thing is that make sure that you know how to pull your tr you know how to aim and how to pull the trigger that's the very first basic things because when we get people coming to um practical shooting and they are just uh they've seen the matches and they and they come and they spray around it's not about that it, it is still uh it's still shooting and shooting means placing a bullet in the center of the target no matter what the target is so that part needs to be clear before you go any competition shooting and I'm not talking only about practical shooting here but it's 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 worth it for a steel challenge or Bianchi Cup or any style of shooting uh, that the very first uh, important thing and then make the step forward come see the practical shooting in the US for the USPSA in Europe with the IPSC and enjoy it because it's a huge large community of shooters and you will meet definitely friends but you will see also different style of shooting and that's personally what I like uh, with practical shooting. I've traveled the world uh, pretty much, not yet to Australia and New Zealand, um, but Europe and let's say Western Europe built stages one way, Eastern Europe built stages another way. You go to the US, you can clearly see a US style of building stages. Different style. You go to South America, it's also a different flavor. And this is what I like about practical shooting because it's always different and you just, you need to adapt. So you have your skills, you set your skills, but whatever you will find, you will need to solve the problem and make your best out of it. So yeah, come to Practical Shooting, you'll enjoy it. 
Ladies and gentlemen, uh, nine-time world champion Eric Rafael right now a CZ uh, CZ factory shooter. Yep. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much, guys. Thank you.